Oh, hi everyone, and welcome to the Scratch Kiss Academy. We are back with Dunera, and I can't believe it's season four already with Dunera. And we're going to, first of all, check out the links coming up in chat. Please check out the Discord, check out Twitter. If you want to get into a viewer game, drop Sprat a message over on Twitter. Come play Eberron with me. I'm running a viewer game for the first time since season one on the Academy. So come and play some shenanigans. If you miss out on anything, you can head over to YouTube and check that out as well. A huge, huge thank you to our wonderful sponsors who we can do this without in the form of the deck of many and the deck of many things. You can donate um, for either all or one of our lovely players here to draw from the deck of many and affect the game. Um, also, the wonderful Mage Hand Press, which you will be seeing some of their new modules later on this week. Um, and last but certainly not least, Hero Forge. Um, and you would have seen our characters in some of the mini uh, miniature form earlier um, in the load-up screen. Otherwise, let's jump into this and hop round and start as we always do with the very lovely Jagon's Gold. Oh, hi! Oh, hi. Uh, I am Jay, uh, or Jay Guns Gold, and I will be playing Paula Packer, our dancer librarian who um, fell off an airship, as did a number of us, <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, and lost at sea. I'm so excited. I am very excited and also a little bit nervous because I think some of our friends may be in danger. I'm sure they're fine. Um, we will uh, now hop down and say hello to the lovely Tall School. Oh, hi. Hello, uh, I am Tall Squall. I am uh, super excited about all of this. I am loving all of this new technology that we have. Um, however, I think I messed mine up. So I will fix it immediately, uh, Scraticus, because I closed the window. Um, <laughs> trying, to clear my, trying to clear out the things I was saying during pre-show, I pressed the wrong thing. And so, yeah. It's gonna happen in the first week. I'm it's awkward gonna... <laughs> turtle who messed up my captioning. Um, but I am uh, I, uh, I'm excited to be back because uh, I am now playing uh, Tolan, uh, I was playing Tolan Folk. I am now playing Avrik Caldwell, who we all know uh, was Tolan's apprentice during our f uh, first seasons. So, um, and uh, there we go. So I uh, ooh, just got a message. I'm going to try to fix my stuff. I can't wait and see you uh, as a new character soon because I am old man technology. Old man. I am Tolan. I threw my phone and it broke. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. And then we're going to hop over to the very lovely Mal. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. Um, geez, I don't even know what to say. I'm excited to be back for season four. Um, Lots of stuff happened. I, I I yelled at Kiana, I yelled at Hans, Hans yelled at me. It was exciting. <laughs> Sorry, I've just looked at your closed captions and oh hi comes up as pie and it's the happiest making me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Um, I'll be playing Reese again. He's not dead, thankfully. Um and yeah, I don't I don't know, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> um, last but certainly not least, uh, the lovely Sarah. Oh, hi. Can't hear you for some reason. <laughs> Yo, can everyone should be able to hear me now. We can hear you. Okay, let's. We're just shaking it out of our systems as we get ready for season four. So we're just having a good shake. I play Florence Fetlock in this game. She is a former postal delivery worker who has transitioned, or rather, who once was and is now again a speaker for those who can no longer speak for themselves because maybe they've passed on into the next phase of existence, be that death or some other veil. And I can't wait to find out how our characters solve the problem of being stuck in the middle of the ocean on a sinking airship. Fantastic. And 
that is where we find you. We find you stranded in the middle of the shattered sea. You've got this very, very small platform that can't quite fit everyone on it, and sort of debris and bits of airship lay sort of scattered, drifting around you. And you sort of look out over this devastation and this chaos. You can see some of the huge bits of ships starting to sink. You can see the sails sort of floating on the surface before starting to sink themselves. And Colin lays there motionless on this platform. Tuva is sat beside him, sort of legs crossed, head down. Brenna curled up on her shoulder. And it just this soft sort of bob of the ocean gently rises you up and down. What are you all doing? Mm. I think Paula is probably checking Talon's pulse. You reach down and you can see he is starting to change. You can feel a pulse there, but it is so slow. But it is regular. It's not like it's stopping. It's just incredibly slow and steady. But you don't see his chest rise or fall. He's alive. Does anyone know CPR or... I don't know. I'm not much of a... a medic. I think Averick, <clears throat> I think he's probably going into sort of a traumatic shock. Um, he is there sort of curled into himself and um, I think he doesn't quite know. I think he's probably backed away from Tolan a little bit. He, he is still changed, um, sort of is sitting there. And I think he's, he's looking at Tolan and just shaking his head back and forth. But also at the same time, he's kind of looking down at himself. I mean, he's got these gills and I think he's just kind of like, looks at his hands, which cut probably webbed a little bit to help him swim just all these things that he's seen Tolan do similar stuff but now it's it's him and I think it's thrown I think his eyes also go back and forth to Clyde I think at first um, when Clyde comes over to him he almost looks at him unknowing, you know, doesn't recognize him for a second, but I think after a moment, just sort of staring into his eyes, he reaches out and puts his hand on Clyde's head and sort of pulls it into his lap. And I think the two of them are just sort of curled up. If there's any sort of a vertical surface that he can lean back on and sort of be his knees pulled into his chest um, as much as he can. You can see there's a couple of bars where some of the steering was and you sort of lean. It's not comfortable. Yeah. You can lean back and rest on that. And Tuva, you can see, doesn't move from his side and just sort of sits there lifting like making sure, almost like tucking him up, like putting his arms down by his side, trying to make sure almost like he looks comfortable. And Rika, you can see by the controls going stupid, like getting like really 
agitated as this thing doesn't seem to be working. What is Reese doing? Um, well, Paula said we should do CPR or something. How does, I mean, Tolan's starting to change, right? You know from past experience, probably because you've come across these things before, I will say that you know once the change starts, it's going to happen. I think Reese would, and I'm imagining like we're all kind of clustered on a relatively small area, right? It's very, very small. It's very awkward, very cramped. You notice that um, Clyde and like Brenner and things like that, they've sort of gone incorporeal so that people can sort of fit on fully. Um. I think Reese would put a hand on Paula's shoulder for a moment and looking down at Tolan, he's just like, CPR is not going to help. He's beyond that. And knowing what Tolan's going to change into, I think Reese would start to pick him up to put him on the water so that he's not on our physical space because as we know from past encounters, if once he's changed, if he touches you, it, it's not comfortable at all. What, what, are you, what are you doing with him? Do you remember the shadow people in Karnan? Yeah, that's Tolan. You're right. It was Tolan. It's still Tolan. He's not going to hurt us. It's going to be fine. He'll figure it out. He always figures it out. He always he always knows. He always has a plan. There's always something. There's something. He's just. It's just going to take a second. He'll figure it out. Uh, I think Reese just keeps. He's just going to keep doing it until like he's not like just throwing him into the water. Like see you later. <laughs> But he's says debris. There is like things like that, but you do feel a little like hand of Tuva on your sleeve. Does it? We can't just leave him out here. Where we? How are we going to take him with us, especially when he changes? I. But we don't have to fully take him with us. But we can't leave him out here. We're not leaving him out here. Definitely not. But I get it. If he doesn't fix himself, then I'll fix him. I'll figure it out. And I'll help you. we got to figure out a way to fix these people. There's hundreds of them back in Karnan. You know, I think... I think at that point, Reese actually gets a little frustrated. And he just, he, I think he, I think he's picked Tolan up and at their insistence, he sets a Tolan down, but like on a different piece nearby at like he reaches over as far as he can. And he just, uh, I don't think he turns back to the group, but I think it's obvious that like his shoulders tense and he's just like, sometimes you can't fix it. Feel that little arm sort of go round yours. She doesn't say anything. She stays there. And if anything in the distance, you can hear those waves sort of knock against what sounds like the, this, this debris, this wood, these just bits of airship that surround you. And there's a moment where, especially you, Reese, in the direction you're looking, you can see what looks like 
a tiny amount of land. Like, if anything, you'd say it was a line of color, like a line of green and sort of dark sort of browns and blacks on the horizon. You just about see it as it rises and as the waves rise and fall. And this huge giant in the distance walking, almost wading now as it starts to make its way to land. And something we've never done in this game, I'm going to offer you a group GM intrusion. And to get out of it, you all have to pay one XP if you don't want it. I have a I have I I have a I have a mechanical question. A mechanical question, yes. Because between seasons you had us all tear up, technically we don't wouldn't have XP because you have to spend it to tear up. Correct. <laughs> There's your answer. So <laughs> can we get some concerns in chat? <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> Sorry hmm. to a uh, team Alist. player. I, I swear, <laughs> Alist. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm down for the GM intrusion, both mechanically and narratively. I will narratively. say you can say no if you don't want it. Remember, just GM can't. intrusions aren't always bad. They're just complications. They're just intrusions, <laughs> and they can be bad and result in a good thing. I'm down for some complications. Okay. You are all on this this platform and there's this moment where you can feel the water sort of pick up and you're pretty sure you can see the motion of this giant moving towards land. Um, Florence, can you make an intellect check for me, please? And yes, you can, I can see as it does, it's getting... The water's getting lower and lower on its body, as if it's getting shallower and shallower. On that intellect roll, I will say you know what coastline this is. You don't know specifically where this is, but this is your home coastline, as this giant heads towards it. And there's a moment where you look at it, and it starts to glow and it starts to run and you can see the water itself drop and sort of start to draw back away from the land as the ocean rushes to fill where it is you feel all of your stomachs drop and you feel this dip and you look at everything around you and there's almost like this swirl as this water starts to draw away as this giant moves closer and closer towards the land before you see it take that step and there's a moment where you hear it's not quite a rumble but it's like everything goes quiet for a second no birds, no sounds at all. All the gulls you can see overhead leaving as it does so. And Reese, that land you could see starts to disappear as a huge tidal wave starts to raise up and get higher and higher and higher with the effect of this giant effectively leaving the water you notice the ocean is dropping and in front of you almost this wall of water starts rising up higher and higher and there's a moment where you see the debris of all of these airships almost become vertical You all see this. You see Tuva turn and just scream as she clamps onto your arm, Reese. 
what would the rest of you like to do as you start to feel that pull as if you're being pulled towards the wave? Averick, um, I, I'm kind of assuming that Reese has, you know, placed Tolan on, you know, another plank or whatever. I think Averick dives to try to go to grab the plank that Tolan is on and somehow protect him. So um, if it's drifted away from us, he would he would jump off what we're already on, but he's going to go. And uh, if he's still gilled and uh, and swim, you know, swim finned up um, uh, and actually buffed up, uh, he's he's going to go like place himself to you know, bodily protect um, Tolan. Quick question. Yes. Um, his leg, I know, is non-operational. His mechanical leg uh, is non-operational. Um, is it just, uh, is it crushed or is it just like that it's shorted out from all the magic? It's more it's shorted out. It doesn't look good. It looks dented, but it's not like it's mangled. It's not mangled. Okay, so that's fine. He's just, so at this point, so he's dragging that behind him, you know, sort of, uh, but he swam with it before, so he is over with Tolan. You dive into the water, the rest of you see Averick dive into the water. Clyde does this very awkward splash that sort of follows um, after him, and you're watching Averick really swim towards this plank as it starts to arch up as this water drags away. Paula, what are you doing? Um, Paula realizing what's about to happen. She frantically looks around for a, a narrow and long piece of scrap. Mm -hmm. You could definitely find some of that. There's a lot of it around. And um, she tries to, um, she leaves like the the piece of the large piece that they're all stood on right now or sitting on right now and uh she tries to stand on it and look towards the rest of the group <laughs> surfs up <laughs> 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 and you climb on you manage to climb onto this piece of wood it's almost sort of you can see where it is too starting to be dragged out um reese you sort of Feel two little hands tighten around your arm, and you notice her look down at her jacket with this little dragon's head poke out, as well as this little red panda in Arcway. She looks at you, zips up her coat, and pulls up her hood and holds onto your arm very, very tightly. Is that and looks towards her hand and starts trying to flick up this barrier around her. Florence, what are you doing? I think Florence has been sort of doubled over. Her face is still stinging and red from tears and trying to kind of jerk herself out of this experience that they've just had. And she is by no means prepared for the next one. She has half a section, half a second of realization as she looks at the coast and knows that we're a lot closer to home where she originally came from the Thundercliffs than they're supposed to. So at the very least, she has some idea of kind of where they are, but it's not where they were supposed to go. And when the water starts to kind of come out from underneath the boat, Florence is able to finally jerk out of that headspace and focus on what's ahead. She just grips a hand on one of the, like a pulley or a pole or, or some part of the structure of the ship. And she can't help but smile at Paula as she jumps on a surfboard. No, you have the right idea. When, when the storm comes and the waters rock you, you can't fight it. You can only ride it. And, there's and a she'll, Sorry, where Rika pulls you up and sort of makes you hold on to one of these bars. He's like, I hope you are ready. We are going to be swimming. 
I can swim, but I'd rather not to. Uh, don't have much of a choice this time around, do we? And she kind of like wipes a few tears off from one side of her face and is like death gripping the ship as much, or the floating vessel as much as she can. Is there anyone else on the boat besides um, Reese, Reese, Reese Tuba, Rika? It is just you three at the moment. And what is Reese doing as you, because Reese, you're watching Tuva try and generate this thing. As you, you are all looking at this wall of water coming up and it is full of wood and broken bits of airship. Um, I think. I think Reese is like really holding on to Tuva with one arm and he's grabbing kind of like Florence is doing. He's grabbing onto part of what they're on and like if there's a rope, he'll wrap it around his wrist a little to try and he's he's not going to like jump off this thing until after the theoretically the worst of it has passed. Okay. He's going to try and ride it out and hold on to Tuva. I need you all to make a mic check for me to be on the whatever it is you are holding on to. Um, has it been ten minutes since the crash? I'm just seeing whether it will or not it's been ten minutes. Yeah. So, um, does this take an action? No, it's an enabler. So, um, I think just because he's so desperate, um, I'm going to have Avric will go ahead and activate uh, muscles of iron again, which makes gives me uh, an enabler on a um, an asset on uh, my checks that aren't attack rolls. Okay. Could I have one from Reese and Paula as well, please? Um, wait, so you, that was a might check you said? Might check, please. Okay. Nice. Is it not loading? It's again? not. It's I not know, going through. That's roll twenty. Building suspense. I'll give it a second to see if it rolls. Oh, there we go. <sighs> Me and you both. Cool. The, the yeah. big guys. First of all, cool. Florence, you're hot. You've got both the bonus of holding onto this thing. And you have this massive hand clamped onto your shoulder as well, which is almost forcing you down onto this ship. As this wall of water almost blocks out the sky above you, and you actually feel this almost like huge shadow and the spray of sea salt as it starts sort of splattering you all. And you hear Rika in your ear, hold your breath and she clamps like her hand over your mouth and you feel this wall of water hit you. Paula, there's a moment where you don't catch the wave, but you see how you're being drawn up it. You see as you are sort of riding this up, as the pull, this, up, this undercurrent is dragging you towards the top part of the wave. You can see Florence and Rika below. And there's this moment where the wave starts to tip you up and you hold on to this platform. But you see Avric clinging on as he's swimming and he's got his arm wrapped over Tolan around this, um, oh my God. <laughs> like, you're hold, like holding on to Tolan as he goes, but um, Avric, there's a moment where the, there's another piece of debris that flicks up, hits this plank, and sends both Tolan and the plank he was on crashing into you, so you disappear straight beneath the wave. Reese, you're clinging on, but there's a moment where just your hand slips. You're trying to hold on to too many separate things, pulling you in different directions. And this huge piece of wood comes absolutely soaring towards you and it's more letting go because you don't want to get hit. 
yeah, rather I'm, than I would, anything else. I would totally. I if that's if my choice is to, yeah, my choice would totally be to let go and hold on to Tuva than sit here and get yeah. one of us you, get hit by this. You see this sort of almost what looks like maybe part of a mast or something comes spinning at you, and you take that opportunity to grab her. You see this shield flare up, and you have to jump and disappear beneath the waves. I need you all to make one more might check for me, please. <laughs> I'm going to put a little effort into mine. <laughs> um. I put effort into my last roll. <laughs> so this time I was like, screw it, we'll just go straight die. I was feeling pretty lucky after the last two rolls, but I was mistaken. <laughs> At least you got style. Okay. Florence, you feel that wave hit, and it's like being hit with, by a brick wall. You feel Rika's hand leave you as there's this moment where the water is just too much on these metal bars, and it's sort of... The whole platform flips as you see Reese take grab Tuva and jump off Astrid diving after him. And you get flung. You feel your feet leave the platform. You feel yourself sort of there's a moment of when you're being thrown through the air and you hit and it's almost like a sting with how hard you hit the back of this water as you start to sink into this dark dark ocean there is a moment where what did what did reese roll did it come up yes it did yeah i got a reese. seven total yeah i can see it um it was a moment where you sort of come up and you manage to sort of you can see this bizarre shimmer around you of Tuva's shield as she's got her eyes absolutely squeezed shut and this moment where you pull both of yourselves back up out of the water you see more debris coming what would you like to do with that um it seems like being under the water is safer right now so i think because Tuva's got her eyes so closed because she's focused on this shield. Reese is just like, hold your breath, and they go back down. She nods as you pull yourself both down, and as you both go down, you sort of hold her, and you're still, you've got your back to the um, the ocean floor, and you're looking up, and you can see that, that light dappled through, and you see this huge, almost like spear of wood come crashing through um, the water bubbles erupting and just narrowly miss you and graze past as you see this platform sinking lower and lower and what looks like someone else down there. Then there's a moment where Averick, you manage to come back up. You've got Tolan in hand, but you are, it has taken everything for you to fight back up with both of these. And that is the point when you look and you can see at the top of this wave where it started to crash, that sea foam, that white where the wave breaks. Holla, you feel like you're doing pretty well. And there's a moment where you see Avrik come out of the water and you make that eye contact. And you don't see that bit of debris that almost comes soaring over the side and you just feel a crack across the shoulder and neck and head and you feel hazy for a moment and nauseous and i will say Avrik can see this as Paula just drops like a dead weight and disappears beneath the waves can i um and Avrik, how how close is she to me you would have to swim up as this is crashing. So. Let me tell you what I'd like to do. You can tell me not whether I can yes. do it. So um, building Averick was interesting with the, uh, under with all the things that we talked about. Um, so uh, one of the things uh, he's got, uh, well, first thing he's, since he's still sort of in an aquatic form, 
um, and he's got uh, muscles of iron on. The other thing I can spend <laughs> more light points, which could be a bad uh, thing to do. I can, uh, he has elasticity. Can I basically, and I think it's Avric in a reaction mode. He doesn't know how to do this, but he's like, I've got to get to her, start swimming up and then like reaching out for her and just his arm basically lassos her. Gonna like Captain Fantastic it. Okay. Yep, definitely. Um, I'll you, spend the points. You can just about, if you roll for me, and then uh, um, so is it just a spend one? It's a spin. It's a spin yeah. one, but then I've got to. I mean, it's aiming, so I mean, I could certainly. It would Did be you a roll speed. A speed. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. roll me a speed, please. Uh, any asset with that, or since he doesn't know what he's really doing, and it's a new I body would. stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's I fine. would say so. Yep. Okay. Um, natural twenty. <laughs> <laughs> There's a moment where Paula, you can. You're, you've hit this water, and it is cold. It is icy cold as you have started to plummet. Your head is sort of absolutely splitting all over the place, and you can see almost like that mist of red go past your eyes where it's hit you on the head. And just before you black out, you can feel your lungs filling with water. And then almost a bit, for a moment, you think it's almost like a, a weird sea, sea creature, like an eel or a fish or something, is this limb comes out of nowhere and this hand grabs hold of you and starts to pull and you black out as you feel yourself being dragged at high speed through this water is there any way i can I, tell me if i'm too far gone but is there any way i could use ignores pa ignores pain at Roll this point it for me <laughs> let's have a look Okay, um... I will what... say, you won't pass out. You won't pass out. But, and it's almost like the water is numbed. What, so you don't feel like you have energy to swim, but you won't pass out from the pain. But there's this moment, you can feel yourself being dragged. You're hazy, you haven't passed out, you feel nauseous, you feel sick, but you don't feel the pain. Probably the one that you should feel. Mm -hmm. And you start being pulled. Florence, you have plunged right down into these depths and you're starting to sink. You think you can see Reese and Tuva, almost like a shadow above you as this huge mast like wooden spear comes moving downwards through this water. Could you roll me either a speed or a might to avoid it, please? Ooh, would this be my defense? Yes, it would. Ooh, that is something Florence is trained in. Describe how you avoid it. So I think Florence is savoring that breath Rika made her take, and she can feel it almost like welling up inside of her chest. And she's she's in that moment where she just sink, keeps sinking deeper and deeper, and the like bubbles start to explode out of her chest as she starts to come through. And it's at that moment when she starts realizing I have to swim and I have to swim up that the spear comes down and she's just like using her very compact but sturdy form to just very quickly or rather not quickly but deliberately move out of the way and she's almost like blowing the bubbles and like the air from herself to help like move out of the spear. Yeah, you sort of almost like force yourself. There's almost like a, it doesn't look elegant. It's a bizarre scrabble as you sort of move and you can feel the force of it sort of go past you. You see the platform you were on far deeper than you as it starts to sink down. Those of you underwater, so re in fact, all of you who are all underwater right now, you feel that wave pass, you feel it rise up and then you feel the drag again, the drag when a wave starts to build. Because when there's a tidal wave, there's never just one. And you feel it, you feel that undercurrent, you feel yourselves all spinning and churning in this riptide that is throwing you off in this darkness. And I need you all to, I'll let you either make a, if you have perception, you can roll perception, or anything uh, like an intellect or speed 
to work out what way is up. Can I have a uh, asset for uh, eyes adjusted? You can. Can I also have an asset for eyes adjusted? Yes, you can. Uh, and that's an intellect, yep. 14 with eyes. I'm going to spend some effort along with my asset. <sighs> Jesus. <laughs> oh my gosh. There is a moment where Florence, you have been in these riptides before. This is, this is your shoreline. And you have been taught from a young age on how to deal with this. And for that moment, you almost get like that the childhood flashback of being told how to deal with these waves and there's a moment as you sort of half right yourself and you see that dappled sunlight at the top of this huge just mass of green and blue of these waves that salt and you start to shoot upwards and on a nat 20 you can definitely start to swim and head towards the surface Averick, you two are being spun round, but it's almost like there's a moment where Holla, you start to panic. You can't see which way is up. It's darkness all around. And Averick, you see those bubbles, those panicked bubbles leave Holla's mouth. And there's that moment where the glimpse of the light catches them and you watch where they raise up. Indicating yeah. up. Um, I, at this point, I think also because he's able to breathe, but he knows he's, he's got Tolan and Paula who both need air. Um, so he's going to just try to rock it up as fast as he can just to get them some air, even if we have to dive under the next wave again. You start to force your way up, and you can see Florence ahead of you. If anything, by that point, you can see where Florence is headed and you aim for that. And Polar again, you feel like you're being dragged. There's almost a disorientation of both being hit by some of this debris and the nausea that goes with it, that it's just thrown your perception right off. Sorry, Florence, what were you saying? No, it, so as she's starting to shoot upwards and, and realizes, don't panic, I, I know these waters, is she gonna pass by anyone else who's struggling with the waves as she goes up. I will say the closest person to the surface is Reese. And Reese looks like he's struggling. Reese, you are thrown almost into this darkness. It's almost like the energy coming from Tuva's shield is blinding you. Like everything around you is just becoming too much and it's a panic. You can sense Astrid somewhere sort of panicking as well. And Florence, I will say that is who you can pass. Because so it think, was a nat uh, 20. <laughs> so can she, or it was a 19? Can I still? Still a nat uh, 20, technically. Oh, cool. So <laughs> she will, I think, use that to write or to change her direction, and she'll start swimming in that direction. And her goal is as she starts to pass them to grab a hand on something and yank them up to the surface as well. Okay, all of you, one more time, for the last time, roll me a might, please. Or, I will say a speed, because it is swimming. Well, I'm going to spend effort again, because <laughs> this has not been going well. 11. So I was realizing that basically Averick has Tolan in one arm, has 
Paula in the other arm and has a bum mechanical leg. So which assuming is heavy. That, which is heavy. So I guess here's a question. So I've got one, I got one of two things that this, I'm just trying to add to how he can get up because I've got I got a thing that's not really meant for this, but I feel I just so I've got toughness, which is basically rework your flesh and bones that are toughest. So I'm like almost like that he makes almost like a dolphin tail out of his one good leg type idea um, to in order to like even try to be okay on not have like disadvantage or un, you know the difficulty be quite so high on this. The other one is just. I mean, it's either I spend two might points or three might points for you for there not to be such a penalty for everything that I'm carried, even with muscles of iron, um, which is three points, which is just reconfigure, which basically is what gives it gives me an extra edge, which you know makes it so that I've got a, extra edge. But that thank type. you, Fernando. For that thank you, Fernando. Everyone has an advantage. Okay. So I, it really comes down to for him to, to for him to give himself another. Uh, to not be, have a disasset, whatever, a, dis, a <laughs> an inability um, from the fact that he's carrying so much stuff uh, to try to bring it down. Do you want me to spend two might points or three might points or can I, am I just done? What would you like to do? I kind of get the like, the idea of, Recon- I love the, the the word reconfigure because I just think it's a really cool word. Um, but the re- thing that's probably closer is to use the two might points for uh, reworking my flesh and bones to make them tougher. So or to make that more like a, that, yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and use toughness, pull another two out of my might pool for that. I'm assuming that just gets me not having, you know, that gets, I'm not saying that I, that gives me an asset. I'm saying that just gets me even. It gets you pretty even. Yep, and then... What did Paula roll for? Well, I haven't rolled yet. Um, I'm thinking... Can I maybe... help Talon if I... I... do it that way. Oh, never mind. (laughs) (laughs) Or maybe not, you know? (laughs) So, but, okay. Um, can I use, mm, well, so right now if Talon is doing the heavy lifting, perhaps, um, I can use ignore or not ignores the pain, think your way out. And Mm -hmm. then, so that way I can use like a perception Yes, go to uh, help even more to like kind of like point like oh go there. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll say that's um, an immediate thing, and there's a moment where you can see Avrit get disorientated because he's holding two people, and you sort of give him almost as much as you can, like an elbow, to get him back on track and to point as to where you're going. And Avrik, there's that moment where you can see Paula has her head is lolling. There's this blood sort of coming almost out like a mist. But she is just, I don't know, would Paula yell underwater? Would it be that sort of thing? Or is it literally just gesturing? Um, I mean, I think at this point, Paula has very little air left in her lungs as she actually like was swallowing water before so i think it's more of like a a a limp flail (laughs) in the direction okay and there's the moment where you head towards the surface reese you feel florence's arm grab you and almost just give you that push in the right direction she doesn't break the surface the same time as you and as you do you can see that wall of water coming, that second wall. And all of this debris, these huge platforms bigger than before. And there's a moment where you feel like something hits you, but there's nothing around. It's like it hits you again and again, almost like as if you're being thrown somewhere. And you can hear singing in your head 
you can hear Astrid's song. And there's a moment where things start to distort. And you see this wave coming and you almost feel paralyzed. And that special ability, Mal, that we wrote into Reese's character, can you roll that four times, please? As there's oh, okay. a distortion in your vision. And your roll for technically um, eyes adjusted is adjusting to a lot more than the dark. Okay, so I have to. I'm assuming then I have to spend a point for each roll, like it's written. Um, you only have to do it for one because okay. I have requested four. Yeah. Okay. Oh no! <laughs> I love how the season is starting. <laughs> you look at that wave. Tuva breaks through. You hear her gasping for air as she breaks through. Her eyes wide as she looks around and looks towards this wall of water. And you have gone solid, almost like paralyzed for a moment. And all of you start breaking the water's surface, breaking through, breaking up. And there's a moment of where your stomachs drop as you start to be at the base of this wave, as you start to be trying to be dragged under again, trying to keep your head above the surface. And there's a shimmer in the air, almost like a heat wave like an oil slick. Polly, you break the surface and you break the surface of your of the water into the darkness. Averick, you don't feel like you're holding onto Tolan or Polly anymore. There's nothing here. The water's gone. You're thrown almost into this empty blackness, this weightlessness as there is nothing here. You're almost in this void. And Florence, there's a moment as you're pushing Reese up, you're pushing him real, really hard. And somewhere you hear Rika's voice, almost like a scream. And you realize you're not holding onto Reese at all. As it's like you're falling like you did off the airship through this darkness, almost like the blackest, darkest night. And Reese, everything goes dark the only thing there's only two you see beside you and that's two of the holding gripping onto your arm and astrid by your side when a huge eye blinks in the darkness and a hand comes across and you feel that weight as it hits you hard and you all black out and everything goes silent. There is a time of quiet. And you, first of all, probably Florence wakes first. And it's a strange feeling. You feel really cold. Very sort of like bitterly cold, like when you've been out. It's, you'd almost compare it close to walking up on the thunder cliffs on a winter's morning where the breeze is icy and brisk. But this is dry. And if anything, it's so much colder but you've, you can feel how dry it is by as your, your tongue sort of touches your lips and they're chapped. They just feel very dry. Everything feels dry. But 
there's almost a crackling warmth of the flame that bathes your cheeks. And you feel like your body itself is warm, but it feels like it's being weighed down. And you can feel your eyes start to open. You feel very tired, very, very heavy. And you realize that weight on your chest is furs and leather, almost sort of covering you up to your neck, keeping you warm. You look like you've been tucked in to stay warm. And beside you, you can see Reese, you can see Paula, you see Avric, you can see Tolan, you can see Rika, you see Tuva, all in a very similar position to you. And as you look around, or you look up, you're looking at a night sky. Oh, it's a, it's such a deep navy blue, it's almost black. And it's you can see almost these these trees that tower above and sort of hear them as they rustle in the wind and five moons in the sky overhead. What would you like to do? I think Florence blinks a couple times and at first she almost reflexively just uh, uh, like starts coughing and sputtering and, and kind of almost has that feeling of there's still water in my lungs and I, I still have to, to make it to the surface. And then she calms and she looks around and she mutters, where, where am I? And takes stock of everyone before finally looking up to the sky. How many moons does the sky she knows have? You know of many moons, but from Veladri, yeah, Veladris, from the Thunder Cliffs, you will have only ever seen two. So she blinks up at the moons and counts them two or three times before finally convincing herself, okay, that does seem to be five moons. Uh, and she'll sit up and kind of look around to the group and I think take closer stock of everyone to see if they are in a space where they're gonna be waking soon as well. Could you roll me an intellect check, please? You look around and your eyes are bleary. You feel like you've been asleep for a long time, almost like you've just, like when you've had a lay-in for too long. And you look around this forest, the trees almost equally spaced apart. You see snow on the ground. Not where you lay, it's almost like a clearing has been dug out. And at the edge of this clearing, where the snow begins, you see small campfires, but the flames are blue, and they crackle away, keeping you warm. And you see what looks at first almost as dark as the night itself, a creature moving very fluidly between the trees, as if they're doing following the circle, the line of these campfires that have been set up. Huge creature, wide antlers, this moose of sort of almost that starry night, almost that glitteriness as it moves. You see it every now and then going corporeal as it blends through one of the trees. 
as it wanders round, its heavy head sort of lolling from side to side, as if it's looking around. And you see at the centre of this clearing, away from all of you, but close enough so that you can feel the fire, you hear a clatter of pots and cast iron, and a very large figure sits with their back to you, in heavy furs, sort of hunched over, hear a grumbling to themselves, if anything. And at this point, Holla, you would start to come round and see, the first thing you would see from lying on your side is this huge moose, like this in arc way. And it's almost what, it's the only thing you can focus on as you walk past, and it walks past those blue flames, it almost looks like it takes some of it and gives it a soft glow as it walks. Um, I think Paula will put her hand to her head where she feels this throbbing pain from where she was hit and looks at her hand see if there's blood. When you sort of reach up and touch your forehead you feel bandages there and this it sort of goes across your head underneath your hair and around the back and there doesn't seem to be any fresh blood there I think Paul will try to try to push herself up but is very exhausted from um from the waves and kind of lets herself lay there a little bit longer but tries to flop her head back and forth and and look around to make sure that all of her companions are you don't feel like dizzy or sick anymore you don't feel that nausea if anything you feel pretty well rested but knackered like you feel like your body aches your arms ache you can definitely uh feel an ache down the shoulder where you were struck as well and you've got all these heavy leathers and furs on you but you can feel even just by sitting up how cold it is as you sit oh, well now would be a good time for Matthias to show up with his burning wings and Paula will try to turn on her side towards the fire you too see this fairly large figure tall broad you can see as the flame sort of dance about the face you see very very wild blonde hair piercing blue eyes that look like those laughter lines sat there and a reddish beard, but very weathered skin. And he's there sharpening a hunting knife. And you can see by his feet your compass. And some of your other belongings. You can see Reese's blade as well. But it looks like he's been sharpening it. I think Florence has slowly gotten up and is carefully but purposely kind of almost crawling and then standing and then very slowly moving over to that blonde figure. As you sort of get just even a little bit close as you move, you see a, the head sort of not turn back and fully look at you, but just gesture in your direction. You're going to want to bring the blankets with you. It's cold. And you're hardly dressed for it. 
I think Florence's ears perk up and she she thinks, have I heard this manner and this cadence of speaking before? And she's she's specifically thinking of, of how Rika speaks and is is wondering, are these two connected or is that just as crazy as five moons being in the sky? It sounds familiar, but it doesn't sound the same. It does sound more what you would call northern, but it's not something you necessarily recognize. So I think she pushes that thought to the side, nods kindly at the figure and grabs the blankets and kind of continues to move closer while wrapping them around her shoulders. I don't want, I, I don't mean to be rude and gosh, I, I think I have about 50 questions for you, but I think the most important one is, are you the one who saved us? And he looks to you and his brow furrows, <laughs> saved you. I found you. If that's what you mean by save. In fact, I had questions for you. And your, well, um, your friends and yourself look pretty battered. Yeah, no, I'm not going to argue with uh, that, but you certainly seem to be taking care of us. So regardless if you saved us or if you just found us and then saved us a little bit afterwards. Thank you. What is, um, my name's Florence. He looks at you. He sort of puts down this wet stone and this large blade. And he looks at your hand as you hold it out and sort of mimics it and shakes it. You feel a heavy hand. It's almost squeezed a little bit too tight. It doesn't feel malicious. You think maybe it's just not something they're used to. And he looks at you up and down. My name is Olin. Olin, nice, nice to meet you. I, uh, yes, no, it's nice to meet you. The last thing I remember is tossing and turning in, in a series of tidal waves I couldn't break free from. And then all of a sudden I'm in this black space and now I'm here. And I just, I don't know, it seems like you've given us blankets and you've put up a fire, so. It is good to see you. He looks at you and slightly confused again. I think you're hungry. And he sort of reaches over to this pot and the stew is cooking. And there's no like ladle or anything. You just see him sort of scoop a bowl in and just sort of thrust it into your hand. And Polly, you can see this from where you are. Can Paul and hear their conversation? You can definitely hear. It's not super quiet, but it's also a very close space. And you see this man hand Florence a bowl of stew. But before he fully gives it to her, you see him take a big chunk of the meat out and flick it over to the other side of the camp where you can see the dragon is sat on a log and snaps it out of the air chomping on it as it's there with its wings spread like cormorants do when they dry off and it snaps at this and you see him quirk a smile I think Paula would speak up and um when he says that you're uh you're probably hungry and she's telling the truth and Paula will kind of (laughs) finally start to push herself up for real this time <laughs> and her, kind of crack her back and her neck <laughs> and he looks over at you it's like there's plenty to go around blankets well, that's... It's need gestures to you Paula to put the blankets around and you do feel as soon as you drop those you think you don't know how cold it is but you, it is too cold And Avrik, you will start to stir as Paula moves. Uh, 
I think there's a quick moment of panic of thinking he got knocked out and is still underwater. And so I think he sort of starts to sitting up position. And quick question. Seems like some time has passed. It does. You're very dry, if that helps. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think as he sits up, he first uh, just tries to get his bearings because the biggest thing is that he just, his, his body feels not his own and very different. Um, the one where Paula was and skidding up, I think the one arm, while not still fully stretched out, is probably too long. The other arm that he was holding on to Tolan with is probably still too bulky. And as he looks down, as he's trying to, you know, move around some, I think his you know, f flesh leg, his leg that is his own, not the mechanical leg, is not quite back to being a leg and a foot. It's still, uh, you know, not full, like, not full dolphin tail, but it is definitely misshapen and hasn't returned to its normal form. And I think he just... What have I become? It just kind of sits there. And you sit there and you watch this moose sort of patrol. It doesn't stop. But you can see it through the trees and you can see Clyde sort of watching it sniffing the ground. And Reese, you hurt. <laughs> And there's a part of you for a while where you can feel like your chest is tight, like it's wheezing, and then you recognize it as a wolf lying on your chest. As Astrid is, you can feel almost, the only dampness you feel is this tongue that keeps coming out every now and then and just sort of licking your face. You can hear a bit of a whine. And you lay there for a moment and you blink a few times and your vision is all over the place but if you start to look like you're rousing you get that again another additional weight as astrid gets excited and sort of stands up on you to get off you but there's almost puppy-like behavior at that point of being licked all over the face, sort of being tugged at and pulled at. And this is a bit colder than you're used to. And it's not that far off. I think I think he smiles, but he's like, that's that's enough. And as he tries to focus his vision, he's looking for Tuva. You can see Tuva in, on like a pallet next to you. And you see about this much of her head because she's sort of got her hood up or someone has definitely pulled her hood up and then pulled the blankets up to about here. And you can see where she is sleeping away. You can hear that tiny little whine as she breathes as if like, you know, when it gets too cold and you get like a nose block, she's sort of there. But she is asleep and she is snoozing. <laughs> she looks very tired. And you hear her voice. She will be fine. Northman. Hmm. Hmm. 
I think uh, Reese will finish sitting up and he kind of ruffles Astrid's fur and is like, go, go lay down with her. She sort of hesitates a little bit. But you see almost like a disagreeable slump at the end as Brenna almost sort of emerges from the blankets and rolls over on her back next to Astrid. And then he'll, you know, he probably adjusts the blankets because it's cold. Even with what he's wearing, it's probably a little cold for him. And he'll look around and make sure everyone looks all right. You can see Averick sat still on his pallet. You can see Florence seems to be eating stew. And this man is reaching out. And Paula, he's scooping another bowl up for you and just holding it towards you. Um, Paula, I think, will finally get up and... Uh, but as he offers the bowl to her, like she'll still have her blankets wrapped around and um, she'll kind of push the bowl away with her shoulders shrugged. Um, kind of half asleep, very drowsily. Excuse me, sir, can you uh, point me in the direction of the beach? And he looks at you, he's like, why would you want to go to the beach here? It's freezing. Well, we have to look for the rest of our friends. Did you travel from the beach? No one comes here by boat or anything. The waters are too dangerous. And yet here we are. So if you could just point me in the direction of the beach, I'll be on my way as soon as possible. And he looks at you and knows it. How did you get here? I did not find you on the shore. Where are we? Right, where are we? We're in one of the old forests. And then he pauses for a moment. Where do you think you are? Eladris? Off the can coast I, of the Can I actually? Cliff? Can I use navigation with the moons and the stars out you to see can. if I know where we are? Yes, you I want to do that. I want to try and figure this out. <laughs> okay. Come on, roll twenty. Give me something amazing today, please. You do have an advantage. Oh wow. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna go home. Bye. <laughs> Maybe reload roll 20 for you because, my God. Um, you are almost, you're feeling too knackered. You know that from where you're from, you normally see maybe three or four on a clear night moons. And normally you see the amber one, the one that's very silver in color, and this one that normally is this very soft blue glow. But right now you can see a much smaller one that is almost a, a, has a sort of green feel to it and a much smaller one that's pink as it's dwelled up in the sky. And Olin asks again, where do you all think you are? We were on a Valadrian airship on the way to Valadris. He sort of laughs and sits back and readjusts his coat. And you can see um, as he sort of pulls his coat further on how many what looks like more coats are on underneath all of these layers. We don't get any Valadrians up here. This... I found you in the forest. Do you not remember there was there was this explosion, this this almost energy and a, a wind like no other. It almost knocked me off my own feet and I'm a pretty sturdy man. 
and all the trees were flattened, the snow cleared, and there you are, the ground. It's been two days. I can't believe you were out in this weather with nothing but any sort of gestures to all of you. I mean, at least he made an effort. And he sort of gestures over to Reese. I remember... I remember... Water and... Darkness. Oh God, and a an eye, like at the season. An eye. And it looks what like this one, and he points at his own. Like a giant. And he walks, this, this man stands up and he walks very briskly over to you, Reese. He sort of grabs your furs and pulls you close to him. Very close. Your nose almost touching as he looks over your face. Okay. <laughs> And he sort of has a smile on his face. It doesn't really give an explanation. But you notice he looks straight at your eyes. And then he lets go. You should all eat something. We're okay for now. And then we'll... <laughs> I'm not taking you to Valadria. That's a mighty walk. Now eat something. And you, and he looks over towards Avric, and tell your your um, and he starts gesturing towards Clyde. What is it you Southerners call them? Uh, a knockwe. That's it. Um, tell him that the moose is fine. It's it's just my um Andre self. That's what we call them. But. Uh, He's fine. Roderick is just keeping a lookout. Um, oh, this is bad. This is very bad. <laughs> and, and Paula just kind of starts murmuring to herself and, and sits back down where she was laying before. <laughs> I think Averick, I mean, looks over and tries and checks on Tolan. I assume to, is Tolan there next to him? Tolan is there. And kind of has to, kind of rolls over on a hip because his one leg is shorted out. The other leg basically doesn't have a knee right now, um, and his foot is sort of weirdly shaped. Tolan, I don't know what to do. I he sort of looks down and says, "This is." This is your magic. It's not mine. I... Tolan, I need you back. Come on, Tolan. You sort of look at him as he lays there motionless. That breathing is still there. But he does lay motionless. And two very large feet wrapped in leathers almost stands in front of your vision between you and Tolan and a bowl of food is lowered down to your face I said eat of course you're not going to heal if you've been out for two days assuming Abrick's probably hungry and so the smell of the stew sort of gets the better of him Stomach almost rumbles as you smell it. <laughs> Clyde, come over here. Give me a hand. 
in this and great day that you can see he's sort of squinting towards this moose sort of backs up and starts walking back towards you and I think Avric sort of uses um, Clyde to sort of stand himself up you know it's almost like he's on two wooden legs because neither one is working right um probably feeling the cold a little bit now tucks the blankets around tolan and heads over to where the rest of the party is he just sort of looks down into the stew still sort of shell-shocked and figuring out you know, how to use these limbs that just don't seem like they're his right now. Well then, sort of almost ignoring all of like your moods, comes and sits back down. And through this smiling ginger beard, he starts scooping this like stew up sort of um, into his mouth and eating. There is plenty more. And we need to finish it before we go. And he picks up another bit of his bowl and tosses it towards this dragon that sort of snaps it up and starts munching on it. Never seen one of those before. Where are we going? Where are we going? I don't know. Where are you going? Well, you just said okay what's the nearest town to here are we close to any town. place where other people live well i can't leave you here but what i mean is i'm not taking you to Veladria. i will take you back to my village my clan i know we have a village elder who can probably help you out there but uh and he does glance towards reese briefly and then look back you're a long way from Valadria. And I think we'll take our break there. So everyone, uh, go refill your water, get a drink, get a coffee, stretch your legs, and we will be back in a minute.
Um, we are. You are. You're all currently eating stew. As this huge sort of figure of a man sits with you, he looks pretty happy right now. He doesn't. He just looks very content. Every now and then, you see him sort of check back and look on the like towards where this moose is patrolling, and these blue fires that seem to be lining the area. And he looks to all of you. Why were you heading to Vladria? It's very over the top there, I hear. Well, we were going to advise them on our experiences at the church in Karnin. I'm sure you've heard about the recent chaos we've been experiencing there. No. The explosion? And he shifts from side to side. I hate to inform you, I have not even heard of Carmen. <laughs> oh boy. We're a long way from home. Is, is it weather like here? It, well, actually, and he looks at you and goes, actually, forget I asked. Um, I can take you to my clan. You can meet one of the, the village elders and they will um, they will help they they know things things that not everybody knows they read the signs they read the stones the stars the bones all of them oh and he reaches down and he picks up your compass collar and hands it back to you as I tried to clean it up before um, it looked like it taken a battering, but I'm afraid it looks still broken. Yeah, it's um, it's always kind of been this way. I'm really glad that you found it, though. I was actually going to ask about about it. You didn't happen to also find a, like a big meaty book. You know, I mean, I'm sure it would be waterlogged and damaged. I've, but... And you sort of gestures sort of over towards the fire and you can see where there's a stack up where it looks like pages have been fanned out to dry this book out. There's a few things I've found. And uh, I believe this must be yours. And he takes this knife, Reese, and hands the blade to you. And you. you can see it is fully sharpened. Just, I'm trusting all of you. Don't stab me in the back with it. And he gives you a smile. <laughs> mm, I don't think Reese would make that joke, so I won't. <laughs> I really wanted to say that, like, if I'm going to stab you, it's going to be in the front. Yeah. <laughs> and... He looks back to Averick. I don't know what you're going through, but maybe my elder can help with that too. Have, have you seen, have you seen, have you seen people like our companion? Um. I have only one or two. Do you know how to cure them? No. That doesn't mean it is impossible, though. I just have um, greater things on my mind as most people do up here. Also, and he looks uh, over all of you. We will get you some proper clothes once we reach the camp. Do you know anyone who um <clears throat> who knows how to fix uh, artifacts, uh, inventions? And he sort of pulls his pant leg up to showing off his mechanical leg. And he looks at it. 
I know one person in our clan who can. I'm sure she can help. She's very clever. I, mainly if they've got tools, I can assist as well. I just... She won't let you. <laughs> I understand that too. And there's a smile through that sort of very red beard. Can you walk? Can you run? I certainly can't run. I can... I just gotta figure out how to get my other leg right. He sort of looks down at it. Um, you get it right. What's wrong with it? <laughs> well, he sort of hands up, <laughs> holds up his arms where one is, <laughs> you know, sort of almost like orangutan length. Mm -hmm. The other one is really still like very muscular, like overly muscular for even like his, you know, shoulder and his chest and... He looks at you and goes, you're a shaper. It's the problem, I'm not, but I am now, I guess. This is not the problem. We just don't know how to do it, apparently, yet. Yeah. Every skill takes learning. You put the time in, you learn. Simple. I think I kind of inherited, sort of, they jumped me to the end and so. You better jump back quickly then. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. I'll show you my friend. He can do it too. Okay. And he looks sort of around the group. And to um, Florence, he sort of, his eyes linger on you for a moment. And the um, the crystal around your neck that Rika gave you, and then continues to move on. I need you all to be able to walk soon. We are going to leave in an hour. We cannot stay here any longer. I have already stayed here too long. Is there something in particular that keeps you moving forward? And she's just been sitting and listening and speaking in between spoonfuls of soup. The forest keeps me moving. There are things in it I do not want to meet. And I want to get back to my clan. It's, uh, I normally only spend a day or two, but I've added two days to my journey. You understand? Thanks for helping all of us in remembering all this. It means a lot. Okay. We don't normally see outsiders here. Yet the old seeker here and there, but it's been years. And I normally don't stay long. Were they also suspiciously unaware of how they came to be here, or is that just us? No, they definitely made their own way here. You're the first ones who just, you know, Oof, out of nowhere, I have to say. You wouldn't happen to have seen an older seeker around here that might look like me. And he looks confused. 
I have not seen a seeker here in maybe 20, 15 years. Yeah, I, I just, you know, just thought I'd ask because you never know. There's like doppelgangers everywhere you go. So um, does that happen a lot for you? Oh, yeah. You know, I just have one of those faces that just kind of looks like everyone's and he sort of does a slow nod well we don't normally get doppelgangers out here as I said there's not many people out here there's a few other clans but mine is the largest and I will take you there. There is warm bedding, there is clothes, there is food. And I'm sure much merriment and dancing because the evenings are bleak and as they do, we like to celebrate. The moon paths, and he sort of gestures up to the sky. They're making their journey again. Can you always see all five of them, or have there always been five? Yes, of course, there's always been five. Why? How many do you have? Usually three, at most, mostly two. No, and she's realizing it's wrong. There's always been five. You get to see a glimpse of the sixth when you get to the very top. But five is normal. The sixth only emerges every few hundred years or so. Anyway, eat up. I want to move. Brother is getting tetchy. He gestures over to this moose that is now stopped and is just staring at you all through the trees. This is like, and I need to extinguish these fires. They only keep things away for so long. Paul is already starting to take off the pages from the the line and reassemble her book. We still actually go to Avrik before he goes over to Tuva. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, so he's not sure how to treat Avrik right now, but he walks over and kind of like how he would with Tola and he just kind of, are you good to travel? He was looking down at his leg, not even worrying about his messed up arms right now, trying to get it to be a leg again. And, uh, yeah, one or two. <laughs> um, it just, it you see it start to almost, it's a little bit disconcerting probably as it try, you know, starts to liquefy and it just changes shape a little bit. It looks less like something that a seal or a, you know, dolphin tail, but it's certainly not looking like a leg. I, I'm going to try my other <laughs> one is shorted out and the other is this don't push yourself too hard if you want you could ride on Astrid you could carry two before us Let me see what I can do. Thank you. I, Clyde and I can manage, but I don't want to slow us down. We're already going to have to carry Tolan. 
He sort of looks at you pointedly. <laughs> yep. Well, like I said, don't push yourself too hard. I just, I don't know how, I mean, it's all made it look so easy. I just don't know how to put it back together. I don't know where all the parts go inside. I mean, I know what the outside of the leg looks like, but I don't know. I mean, I didn't study stuff like this. Well, like Olin said, and like you said, you got jumped to the end, but it's going to take time to figure it out. I'll just keep trying, I guess. And he's gonna give another shot at it with an effort. <laughs> Spend another three intellect. He's gonna. <laughs> this is this is gonna get this is gonna get tough really quick. And I guess you see it as he looks down at it. He just knowing that he doesn't want to be a burden, knowing that if it comes between them having to leave behind him and leave behind Tolan, that he, I know it'd be hard pressed to get them to keep carrying Tolan. And, and so he just puts all of his will into, you can see the strain on him though. And he, grits his teeth as muscle and bone and tendon sort of realign themselves and while his foot looks like a foot and seems to function like a foot it's sort of very rudimentary you know it's certainly not it looks almost like a mannequin foot instead of, or almost like a prosthetic foot, even though the tendons and everything's there and he can move it around. It doesn't have, you know, what you would normally think. It, it looks almost like a wax sculpture of a foot, even though it is flesh and able to move. Thank you, Reese. Tolan believed in you. I believe in you. Clyde can help me with the mechanical one. He helped me for the first year when I had it. We know that trick. You see Clyde come right over and his shape shifts a little bit, probably a little bit taller and lankier so that he can use him to sort of lean on and to help with this dead sort of mechanical uh, leg on the other side. There's a moment where you see Olin starting to pack everything up. You see Rika wake, she sort of sits up, looks around. There's a brief conversation between her and Olin. She nods. And she throws these furs around her shoulders and starts to pack herself. There's almost, you can see, a similarity in them, mutual understanding. And Olin walks over to all of you once everything is packed. You and your, um, Andre selves, your Inakwe. I need them to be solid for this walk. I need them as unmagical as possible. Because once I extinguish these fires, we are going to become a beacon. <laughs> and we must move fast and we must move quietly. Do you understand? And you see this moose almost like fading out from this navy blue, this black, into the 
this huge creature, this solid mass of fur and antlers, and it stands towering above him. Do you understand? Do our best. best nods. Okay. And you see, um, Paula, there's a moment where you can see him open his hands, his very thick leather glove, and it almost resembles the one you were given. Except this doesn't have crystals in the fingertips, it has it right at the center and runs down to the wrist. And he gestures at each of these blue fires, and as he does, it's, it's almost like the light is sapped from the wood into this jewel at the center of his hand. And he looks back at all of you. We move. You tread where I tread. Nowhere else. And he heaves this huge, like, rucksack on his back. He shoves, like, some bags into some of your arms. And he's made a pallet so that Tollen can be dragged. And Tuva is still asleep, unless you want to wake her up. I think Reese would have... He would have woken her up en enough so that he could tell her that uh, Brenna needs to be solid and all that. And then he'd probably get her either situated on Astrid so she can go back to sleep, or he would carry her on his back so she could sleep, you know, nestled with mm -hmm. his fur and the blankets and everything. Yeah, you can see Brenna switch over. And this, this dragon is currently sat on Astrid's back, kind of proudly, as it's sort of like waddling from side to side, holding um, on. It doesn't really seem affected by the cold at all. And its head sort of creams out and looks around at everything. As you start to walk through this forest, as you leave this this clearing that was protected by these blue lights, these blue flames, you your feet trudge through snow, deep snow, and these trees are sort of spaced an equal distance apart, almost as if they've been purposefully planted. There are no other plants on the ground here, almost like the branches block out any other sunlight reaching the forest floor. And you will start to walk. It is cold, it is bitter. And... Would you all stay silent? Olin does stay silent. You can just see this huge moose walking beside him. And they almost sort of sway in time as they walk up ahead. Every now and then you see him look back, put a finger to his lips and keep moving. How much of the path is being created by him in the snow? Is it that it's literally having to put footprint in footprint or is between the pallet of Tolan, is there sort of a trail? There's kind of a trail, mainly because there's a giant moose in front of you, and you're pretty sure that's what's carving out the path more than anything else now that it's not incorporeal. Um, I think Averick's going to try his best, but the mechanical leg is going to drag somewhat. Um, but with Averick, I mean, if he was trying to literally go footprint to footprint, we, he would have a bigger problem, but if it's more of a... <laughs> you know, it's uh, more of a path, it's a narrow one, it's almost like tracks in the snow rather than anything else. Yeah, Abra could be trying very hard to stay as quiet as possible while he drags a dead mechanical leg. I think Reese would be... If we're traveling in a line, I think Reese would have picked up the last spot to make sure you know, no one's left You behind. can hear, like, Tuva murmuring on your shoulder. She's definitely asleep. She's not talking to you, but you can hear her. And Florence and Polo, whereabouts are you at this? I think Florence finds herself somewhere close to Rika, so probably maybe a little bit near the front where Olin is. And Biddy, 
her little bat in Akwe, who's usually half, you know, mostly incorporeal, this black and shimmering gold, has gone completely black. And Florence has just whispered to Biddy, fly. And Biddy is doing what a bat does and soaring up ahead, kind of not making much noise there, but kind of staying close to the group. And Florence is just trying to take in the scenery and forget forget what happened to them now that they have to be quiet and all you really have is time for your mind to wonder. What about Paula? I think uh, Paula is following not too far behind uh, Talon's palette and uh and as they're walking in the silence and her mind starts to settle um yeah she starts ruminating a little bit on the fact that Talon who's been here from day one is now for all per in, by by all means he's not He's gone, you know, he's, and, um, and now it's almost like everyone is gone. Everyone she's known and, you know, from her mom to Matthias to Talon, you know, it's almost like now there's just, you know, now there's these new people and, you know, Avrik she's acquainted with, but she doesn't have that connection to her past with with really um anyone there and uh and i think she feels really isolated uh and lonely in that moment but to kind of and charlie yeah <laughs> i just saw in the chat yeah charlie um and the dragon definitely doesn't help with that you know that stupid dragon reminding um <laughs> reminding Paul of Charlie so you know she's feeling really shitty but um to kind of you know Paula doing what Paula does tries to like refocus herself on what they're trying to do and starts making a list in her mind of you know okay so first we're gonna get there once we get there we're gonna figure out where we are and you know she starts listing out like the order of operations of pretty much what needs to happen um and just trying to, to reel in her mind. Um, she also probably takes a look at the compass uh, just to see where it's pointing. Can you roll an intellect check for me, please? Okay. Um, am I, is this like a navigation or like a... Yeah, why not? It's a compass. Okay. I'll let you get away with that. <laughs> Uh, and you know what? I'm gonna, uh, spend two from my pool. Uh. Okay. You take a moment holding this compass in your hands as you look down at it. And it's very cold in your hands. Your fingertips, they're almost being bitten by this icy breeze outside, even though you've covered it with so much blanket as you walk. And it's almost like as you blink, you see another pair of hands holding it instead of yours that disappear back to yours almost as fast as it did. And that needle that is usually spinning has stopped. And it hovers slightly northwest in the direction you're going and it hovers just about over what looks like a tiny little detail of all the, the animals and sort of birds and things all around the outside you see it hovering over a small bird and it pauses for a moment as you look at it and almost if you blink again, it starts to spin. 
I think the small bird reminds her of Liz, <laughs> who is also gone. But she just keeps walking. If anyone would be looking around, could they roll me perception or intellect check, please? I think Averick is very deep in his own thoughts and also just keeping his eyes on Tolan and concentrating on just walking and not holding up the party and staying quiet. Okay. Okay. Florence, you don't seem to see anything. It's very dark out here. And these trees almost loom overhead, covering any of the light that these technically new to you five moons sort of bathe over the area. And you can see patches of moonlight break through the branches, but it lands on nothing. Reese, as you look out, there's a moment where this dappled light seems to settle on something. And you can see something moving between the trees. And first of all, you see one. And then you see two. Three, four, five. Not close to you. They don't seem like they're in um, close vicinity, but you see them walking. You see them moving. And it's strange. You sort of blink a few times for a moment. And these huge looming shapes walk through the forest, half hunched, long gangling arms that stretch and drag behind them in the snow. And these things stand, I'd say around seven foot tall, if not a little bit bigger. You know they'd be taller if they would stand upright. But they have these long hands that you can't really see, but they are making trails in the snow as they walk, dragging themselves and their bizarre limbs in between the trees. As they move, you can hear almost like a whispering. It's not really any words you've heard before. But they are tall, gangly, and these tracks, they make a deep. And you notice where they stand, the snow melts, where their hands drag, the snow melts away. You see them moving between the trees, these almost strange shaped heads that aren't looking forward, they're looking down as they hang them to the side. And they weave between the trees. Have I ever seen these before? You've never seen these before. you like to do anything? Um, I think he's, hmm. I, no, I think I think he, this, so much has happened and he, he's not sure what to think about these things, but we've been told to be quiet. So he's just like, this is, this is fine. Totally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I will say you do notice Olin has stopped and held his hand up to halt the party. And you notice he too is looking. And as you do, you realize they're on both sides. He's walking past you in the same direction. And he looks back and starts to gesture for you all to gather. And he puts a finger to his lips. And I will say at this point, Averick, Poller, and Florence, you can see these things just sort of swaying through the trees. The reason you didn't see them at first is the way they moved was almost as if a tree was swaying in the breeze. And Owen looks at you. Do not let them see you. Do you understand me? I fear we may have... And you see his eyes shift, but he barely moves his body. I fear we've walked straight into a herd. Are you aware what to do? Not a clue. <laughs> they are. They are the obsessors. The dark stalkers. They were human ones, like you and I. Not anymore. Do not fight them. If they see you, you run. All you can do is outrun and never look into their eyes. Never look into the eyes. Do you understand? Gotcha. Loud and clear. Oh. And he sort of turns again and starts to very much more slowly now walk with the herd. And as he says and described it as the herd before, you can see how many of these things there are. None of them seem aware of you right now, but they are all headed in a direction. The same as you, as they all loll and sway these long arms. And I need you all to make a speed check for me to stay quiet. Can I use careful movement? Absolutely. <laughs> Um, I'm going to use two for my pool as well. Mechanical question. When you are specialized in something, what does that give you? Do you, is it more than trained or? It's more than trained. It's like the top level. Yep. Cool. I don't you know get... why that means level, but that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> you basically get two assets. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So I think Florence is thankful for anything to put her mind on that was that isn't what they've been through. And she focuses everything she has on making her normally very thuddy, very uh, heavy footfalls because she's a sturdy and compact woman. And um, she is going to be using an ability called Blend In. Okay. Um, I can't find the special ability, but I am trained in all tasks involving sneaking with one of my abilities. So you have one, um, what, Alice? What asset? Asset. asset. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna 
gonna spend some uh i'm gonna spend some effort but since we were unconscious for two days resting are our pools fill yeah you're full okay. you're full okay so yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna actually because the roll 20 doesn't like me today i'm you gonna do have an advantage if you wish to use it i'm just reminding you you don't have to i'm just reminding you I'm gonna, so I have one asset. I'm gonna do th three levels of effort because I can do that now. And then I'm gonna do my advantage too because today's been real bad. And then we're gonna try this out. <laughs> wow. I have another mechanical question. <laughs> yes. I spent my advantage, but can I take that GM intrusion and have an experience point? You can. Cool, I wanna do that. Okay. Averick, you move up behind Olin as he goes. It's almost like you're just willing that leg of yours to move silently. And it sort of goes through the snow, almost just following the path that the moose took. I think it might also be because Strange. of his leg that he actually is almost having a nat this almost same sway. You're having the sway that seems to almost Blip. mimic them as much as it's slow. It mimics. And Florence and Paula, you both sort of, again, watching your feet, making sure you don't step on anything that could make a noise. You can look around and see these things as they go, but you can keep up. You're not right up there, right behind Olin, like Avrik is, but you're both together and Rika is in front of you as you walk. Reese, there's a moment where Tuva sort of slips and you have to stop and sort of heifer back up. And as you do, you look up and one of these things has stepped onto the path in front of you between you and the group. And there's a moment where it stops and it's like it looks from in the left to the right as you freeze and there's this bizarre moment where you see the arms and these long hands that have crossed the path where the snow is already gone you see these are almost like human hands, but the fingers are far too long and they finish in points. And this glow from these moons sort of settle. And it turns, its head still down and lulled and it starts to walk towards you. And you realize how much it is towering over you. It doesn't seem to be looking at you directly, almost like it's looking past you. And you can see the snow melt around it as it does. And you can hear Tuva going, oh, like sort of shifting herself on your back. And it turns and looks the other way and starts to move away when she sneezes and it snaps and looks back in your direction and as it does you notice all of them start to turn and look towards you as if they freeze and you notice almost like spiders, they start moving through the forest on all fours, 
these arms almost move faster than their legs, like they're pulling themselves across the land, like almost how like gorillas move their arms, like land striders, as they tear through this forest towards you. And the rest of you, that is when you can look back and you see this thing face to face with Reese, and Reese, it snaps its head up and tries to look directly at you as it starts to reach these hands out to your face. Would you I would to like do? to run now, please. Where are you running? <laughs> God, I don't know. Um. What uh, alerts uh, the rest of you is Tuva stirring, looking up, and you just hear that ear piercing, that 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 re- just high pitched scream as it starts to almost it's like it echoes through the forest and that's when you look around and you see almost like a swarm of animals they're not coming towards you all of them are coming towards reese Uh, um so yeah uh we're gonna run uh i think he oh geez i don't know (laughs) i feel like i'm back in twilight sands (laughs) You asked for the GM intrusion. <laughs> I did. I did. Um, I I would like to just get around it and run in the direction we're still moving, ideally. Question, did you look at it? I was told not to look directly at its eyes, so I did not do that. Okay, speed check for me, please, as you try and get below its grit as it swipes and grabs for you. Okay, I'm gonna spend some more effort because roll 20 is really being mean to me today. Fifteen beats a difficulty five. You sort of bob and weave, you sort of, as it goes to swipe, you hear to the scream and you drop, you duck and your hands hit the floor and you almost have to scrabble between this thing's legs through this dirt and this and you realize suddenly how hot the ground is as you scrabble through it to get to the other side what are the rest of you doing as you see all these creatures start tearing through the forest i I think avrik oh go ahead Lawrence's eyes, I think, flick up uh, first seeing Rika and then I think past her to look at Olin. And she's thinking, what is he doing? Because she's going to, I think, as her gut reaction, mimic whatever he does. You see him sort of look back at all of you and just goes, run. And these, uh, at this point, this moose just charges off through this forest, heading in the direction you were. It is charging and you see him running. He's jumping over these fallen logs, weaving between the trees, and he is screaming at all of you to run. You can see that he's actually taken Tolan off of the the carry thing, and he's flung him over his shoulder, and he's disappearing off into the woods. Um, Averick, seeing, uh, looking back, first thing, seeing um, Olin, grab Tolan to make sure that he's okay. I'm going to look back towards uh, Reese and seeing Reese sort of juking one way and since all of these are heading towards him. Um, Avrik's going to do uh, something that he actually um, is his magic uh, and use some of his innate, um, you know, he was the star pupil and um, back at the academy. And so he's basically going to hearing about the noise, whichever way that Reese goes the opposite direction, he is going to make a loud uh, cracking noise, basically just a a noise maker, almost like fireworks start to go off 
um, to try to pull some of them away from Reese so that Reese can get away to sort of snap them around um, and not have all of them going around Reese to distract them. Okay, you sort of throw your arm out to the side and somewhere in the distance in the forest, you hear that crack, you hear that bang, that crash, almost like a tree falling in the forest. And you notice that some of them suddenly perk up and they start cantering in that direction. What is Florence and Paula doing? I think Paula is going to leg it. <laughs> yeah, you can sprint, you can run. Mm -hmm. And you notice as you start to make these judgery movements, as you can see Olin has, some of them are going after him. And you sprint. Are you heading after him? Are you heading after Reese? Are you going in a completely different direction? What are you doing? So are, are um, Reese and Olin running in like opposite directions essentially um, reese is trying to follow in the direction of olin but it's sort of a less slight angle at the moment but it is technically in a similar direction it's in a similar direction okay so in that case paula will definitely try to head in that general direction but not follow like directly in anyone's footsteps as to like because if they're getting get caught she doesn't want to get caught you know so okay roll me a speed please or a navigation uh i am going to go for navigation okay. and in addition to that i'm going to um use some effort use how much go for three effort Okay. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you start to run and you can see some of these things out the corner of your eyes starting to jump in your direction as if they've spotted you running. And in this, you don't take a fully different direction, but with the mixture of the trees and everything going on, you lose sight of Olin and Reese and everyone else as you dart through these trees at sort of like at high speed. And you're definitely keeping out of the way of these creatures, but um, you can see more and more starting to pile up behind you. Averick, I will say after you've sort of done this, you can see them turn. There's about three or four that turn and immediately look to you. Um, Averick, knowing that he's somewhat, um, you know, is, is not going to be able to break his own trail through the snow um, is based, is going to follow Olin to try to run as best he can, but um, I, he, it's going to be difficult for him to try to make pace. Speed check, please. And I don't have a darn thing. Um, I'm gonna, I guess I should put some effort in. Uh, he's gonna try his hardest, so I'm gonna put effort into it. Go ahead and spend five points there. I took all your rolls, Mal. <laughs> you Averick's supposed to be having trouble with physical things this entire episode, and it's just not happened. It's almost like your leg is, like you're lolling it along, you're pulling it, you're dragging it, and you've got Clyde almost just those few steps ahead of you, and you feel for a moment like you're chasing Toll and not Clyde. And it's almost like a flash to a situation you've been in before, not this intense, this dangerous, but you are running. You are following Clyde rather than following Olin as much as you are headed in that direction. And you tear off into the trees. You've just seen Paula disappear in one direction. Reese is sort of headed in a similar direction to you. Rika is with you, Florence. What are you doing? And where are you running? 
And I think Florence keeps doing exactly what she was told. She's never been this light on her feet in her life. And I think to the best of her ability, one foot is going in the footfall of the person in front of her. So Rika and then Olin. And she's trying to go as fast as she can. Throw me a speed, please. Okay. Okay. And so start to weave through the trees and you can you're keeping up with Rika she's like a step ahead of you mainly from height rather than from anything else but you both tear through these trees Reese could you make another speed check or I will let you use might purely on how much you're pushing yourself here are you trying to hide or are you trying to run um I am trying to run and I am trained in running Mm -hmm. um And I, because we teared up, I have a new ability uh, that I think I'd like to try. So I have obstacle running. It costs me three speed points, but uh, I can ignore obstacles that slow my movement and I travel at my normal speed. With that, do you think that's a good apply here? Yeah, so I'll spend the three for that and then I'll roll with running. Hope for the goddamn best. I just want you to get a good roll. Yes! Thank you, roll 20. Finally. Describe what this looks like as you are running through this forest with Tuva and Astrid bounding along beside you. Uh, so... I think, I think as he's scrabbling on the ground to get under this thing, and when he comes up, he just slings Tuva around to be in front of him, and he s- sprints off. And you know, he can see in the dim light. Apparently, like he's very, he's got very keen eyesight, and he's just like, he's keeping his eye on Olin and what's going on. And he just every so often, he's like grabbing tree trunks and almost like a almost like using it to leverage himself around and he's diving through things and holding on to tuba because yeah yeah you can she sort of stuck her head down so she's not really doing um anything um as such as you start tearing and running and you are using almost every obstacle almost this leverage for yourself throwing yourself through this forest getting faster and faster and then there's this moment of Averick, you managed to catch up with Olin and he looks at you and gives you this almost this weird, almost like sadistic grin on his face at the fact you're running, considering what form you were in earlier. And you can hear him almost laugh as he keeps charging through this dark forest. You can hear these creatures almost galloping and charging after all of you. Florence, you and Rika are seeing some of them start to appear ahead of you now. They're not just behind, they're in front. Thank you for those nat 20s <laughs> for Reese. Oh man, I think by this point, her her short leg, she's starting to like feel that burn in her muscles and she feels like her heart is just pounding out of her chest and her mind is nowhere and it's everywhere, kind of all at the same time. Does, and, and I think she kind of is, is trying to look ahead, but she's losing sight of Olin. So kind of her vision like narrows to a pinpoint on Rika. And I, I think Florence is kind of trying to use her as a, like an anchor in a storm and is, is trying to like kind of almost reach out to grab at her so that she kind of keeps up because the last thing she wants is to break from another person. Yeah. You manage to keep hold. You can see some of the trails from like the material from her arms and you sort of, as you grab hold of these, she sort of looks back and kind of grabs your wrist at the same time and pulls you forwards up to the same level and you feel like you're being shoved, if anything. It's like she's making your legs move faster as you all tear through this forest. You see these things sort of, um, as you look up, you see these things in the trees 
Some of them are crawling down from the branches, coming down the trunks. You see one of them launch itself towards you, and I need you to make a speed check, please, as it comes straight towards you. I will do this at advantage. Take it. This thing launches towards you. And it's almost like it comes out of the sky, rushing up as it launches itself from this tree. And it comes herring forwards. And you just feel your knees, you're not sure if they buckle or that you meant them to do that. And these two hands of Rika's push down on your shoulders as you feel you're both being shoved to the ground as it just about skims over the top of you and landing in a scrape and a scrabble as it tries to right itself and square back round towards you. Holla, these things are everywhere and you're suddenly realizing they're in front, they're behind, they're above, and you are nowhere near the group. You can't see the group. Okay. Paula will climb a tree, the nearest tree. Mm -hmm. I will say you uh, can see some in the trees. Oh, well, <laughs> is it like da, da, da? oh? No. <laughs> I think that happened. That happened. Um, and then shortly after, <laughs> um, e okay. How about we have a quick um? What about like the horizon? Is there like any lights anywhere like Roll through the trees? Roll a perception check for me. Okay, I'm gonna throw in um some effort, just a little bit of effort. In this one. Hmm. You think for a moment up ahead, quite far up ahead, but definitely up ahead. You see one of those blue fires. Okay. Um, yeah, Paula is going to run towards what she thinks is that blue fire. And you sprint. Mm. And you run faster and faster and you can see that blue flame, you see that blue light. And you think you can see more on the horizon, almost picking up, almost like little stars in the night. There's more and more of these creatures, almost like a tidal wave again, start coming towards you. Reese, you're sort of ricocheting off of every single thing you find. And there is a moment where one of these things you can see launch itself towards you. I need you to make a speed check, please. Okie dokie. Oh, there's that two again. You feel something hit your back. And there's a moment as you let go of Tuva and you can see a sort of roll across the ground through the snow ahead of you. And you can feel this thing on your back and you can feel heat as if it's starting to burn through your clothes as these long fingers start crawling up towards your shoulders as if it's trying to make its way to your face. And I will say there is a moment where you look at Tuva where she's trying to get back up and it almost mirrors Astrid skidding through the snow the last time you saw her as she tries to get up. Ouch, my heart. <laughs> mm, I would like to get up and grab Tufa and start running again. I need you to roll a mite to get this thing <laughs> off your back, please. Oh god, do I want to spend my nat 20 to get the thing off my back or keep it when I start running again? I don't know. Uh, you know what? I'll roll the mite with some edge effort because I've got points in that pool still. I thought... I think that's right. I'll fix it later. Whatever. 18! Seeing 
um, Tuva in this position. She sort of looks up and starts to back away. There's a moment where you just feel this energy, this sort of this fury and strength as you throw this thing off. You don't look back. And this thing you can see grabbing and reaching out for you when you hear this hiss and this heat, but it's not the same heat that was touching your back as crawling out of Tuva's jacket, this small dragon, almost like a snake, comes sort of crawling along, along the ground, trying to fan its wings out as much as possible, climbing onto your shoulder. And you feel this, it's really not a big flame, but it is spitting fire at this creature as you've thrown it off. And you feel these little claws dig into your shoulder of this dragon as you run and you scoop Tuva up and you continue to charge through this forest as you hear this thing wailing and screaming. Avric, you see all these things around you, and there is a moment where you can see it in front of you. You see these blue flames ahead of you on the horizon, but then just dropping out of the tree, this creature lands menacingly, its shoulders almost out of shape, malformed, its elbows almost all over the place. I need you to make a speed check, please. Okay. Um, is this a defense? I would say so. I will use my speed defense. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, I will I will I'm going to only use one effort on this because I might want another one for the next thing that I do. Um, so, yeah, since I'm trained in this, a 12. Yeah. You sort of, you sort of feel yourself, realize you're pressed up against a tree as this thing lunges towards you. And there's just a time where you sort of roll to the side and you see these claws go through the trunk of the tree and splinter this wood. And it starts to yell and screech as it tries to retract it. You feel a hand, a heavy hand, grab the front of your jacket and pull, it's almost swing you round into another tree and hold you there. As Owen puts a finger to his lips and this thing starts to move towards you, behind the tree you're resting against. And there's a moment where it bends down, and where your head is at the back of the tree, you can feel it lean here as if it's looking around the corner. You can feel those, you can hear the hissing of bark burning above your face. You can feel the heat, and you watch Olin's eyes you suddenly realize this thing can't see you. And Olin is glowing this very dark, sort of black, silvery color around his hands. And as you look at him, every now and then he seems to disappear. But as he moves, you see why. It's not an invisibility. You notice he's blending in almost like a camouflage with his surroundings as you see the trees and the branches catch up. So, um, I have sense artifacts. Is this something coming from his gloves? Is this, is, is this, he's using like a, an, is it, is this a something, you know, a golly, use your words. This is him. Okay, so it is him, okay. You can sense it is definitely him because you see this huge moose stood behind him, almost mimicking, which looks like, almost like a chameleon as it sort of changes. It, it, it's almost like it folds up like scales as he changes and disappears. Ooh, so I, let me see if I can, so, see, let me redefine this again. While he's standing there right next to me, literally doing it, and I'm touching him, can I use reconfigure to do it as well? He's currently using it on you. Oh, he's using it on me. Okay, That's I thought it was that he was just- That's why you can't be seen. Okay, can't gotcha. You. I'm sorry, I didn't realize it was happening no, no, no. to me as yes, well. You realize that this thing can't see you because he is holding on to you. Gotcha. Okay, in that case, yeah, no, I just, I get very 
very quiet. I think I do a quick look to make sure Tolan is within this field and um, and uh, that so is Clyde. They are all there. And you see his eyes darting towards the blue flame. We run. And he looks at your leg. Do you need me to carry you or not? Carry Tolan. I need you to carry Tolan. I'll get there. Done. And he lets go. Hey, well, he doesn't let go. She's like, I'm going to let go. And when I let go, you need to run as fast as you can. You weave between the trees. Okay. Okay. Speed check. Speed check. Uh, I will. I saved an effort just in case, in case I would need it, so I will use that effort now. Uh, that's another two points. It was two points before. I don't think I took those off. Um, I don't have anything to do, so here it is. The leg goes out. Run. You start to run, and you're dragging it. You can see Olin take off. Yep. into the night towards these blue flames that you can see. Florence and Rika, you are sprinting. You are dodging these things as they're almost throwing themselves out of the tree at you as you sprint towards this. And Paula, you also can see these blue lights and you're running faster and faster. You've, you've got this, you can see the track, but you can see this one creature that seems very focused on what looks to be Reese running through this as you can see the wall figure behind him you can see Olin you can see everyone apart from Avrik running through this forest towards these blue flames what would you like to do are you just going to keep running um that's the plan right now yeah okay. just you know <laughs> Run like the wind. <laughs> Roll me a speed check, please. Okay. Um, I'm gonna spend three for the pool. Yeah, you sprint. You run, you weave, you jump over every obstacle in your way. Almost the snow is barely slowing you down, but you are kicking it up as you go, as these creatures run through. Florence, you break that line. You can see what looks like this this village set up as these blue fires surround it in huge pyres as you run. You can see some what look like villagers screaming at you to run, holding their hands out. Reese, you've got this dragon clamped to your shoulder. You've got Astrid tearing along behind you as you head towards this finish line, effectively. Avric, what are you doing? Um, I think I see Avric. Actually, from where you are, you probably can see Avric. But I, I think as the leg gives out, and he falls, um, he looks back, and there's a uh, just this frustration and anger and confusion just starts to well up inside of him. Um, I'll hold there to see what Reese is doing. I mean, if Reese sees that tumble, he's headed that way. So. Are you putting down Tuva for I was her gonna to say, run? you've got your hands full. I've got two hands, goddammit. <laughs> <laughs> I realize that's normally not normally how that phrase is used, but it's still appropriate. <laughs> yes. What are um, you doing? He's, he, he, Reese is gonna run over and he's gonna essentially do what Florence did to him earlier in the water and he's just gonna grab Avric and try and pull him along. Okay. And Reese, you know, I- make me I, a speed check with advantage. Okay. I was gonna just spend my 20. I mean, but. if you want. <laughs> well. Okay, 
because I've got a I've got a way that I can assist for us to outrun this thing. But let's let's see what you roll first, or if you want to do your twenty. Okay. Um, because these I, things are fast, <laughs> and you're we're they're we're heavy. Mm, they are cantering towards you. You know, I I really appreciate that Alice gave me the free advantage, but roll 20's been really shit today. I'm just going to spend my natural 20. There's a moment where Reese is... Avrik, you're starting to get up, but you feel this hand almost pick you up out of the snow, out of the ground, as Reese comes headed, sort of tearing towards you and almost dragging you. You feel your legs for the first few feet literally being dragged through the snow as these creatures come tearing through and you head towards that line those blue flames those this village sort of at the side as people are yelling and screaming you can see Olin at the finish line and as this happens all of you reach this boundary and behind you this wave this herd of these creatures come galloping in almost as if they're about to plow through when a figure steps forward, hand raised, and there is a blinding white light. And you hear this multitude of screeches and yells as you all fall over past these fires. And these things jumping from the trees, from the air, from the ground, are almost propelled backwards. And this light blinds you all as it starts to dull you see a very small figure stood there, hands open, this white fire in their hands. And I think that's where we'll leave it this week because we are very close to the time. So, thank you everyone for being here, back for the premiere of season four. This was fun. Um, please check out all the links coming up in chat now that includes discord we'd love we have a channel just for this game we'd love to hear what you think um and what you think is going on um also youtube if you've missed out on anything you can head over to youtube and see all of our games on uh, playlists and you can catch up there if you want to be in a game drop spread a message on twitter that is how you get into a game here um also a huge huge thank you to the our wonderful sponsors who we could not do this without in the form of the deck of many and the deck of many things you can see our humblewood campaign later on this week so definitely go check that out um also may Cham press you can see our campaign with them later on this week so definitely tune in and last but certainly not least hero forge which you'll be seeing more things from us with them very soon otherwise keep evoking emotions and we'll see you next week. Bye.